Okay, section 1-6 is on measuring angles. So an angle is formed by two rays with the same endpoints. And there is an example of an angle below. There are four different types of angles. Acute angles are where the angle is between 0 and 90 degrees. An obtuse angle is an angle between 90 and 180 degrees. A right angle is an angle that is exactly 90 degrees. And a straight angle is an angle that is exactly 180 degrees, also known as a straight line. We can name angles in different ways. In number one, we're going to name the angle in three different ways. I could call it angle OLD. I could also call it angle DLO. Or I could call it angle 5. Now, with naming angles, order does matter. Notice in the first two ways that L, the vertex, is in the middle. Um, also, angle 5 is at the vertex, but that the angles go in order. I go from O to L to D, or D to L to O. So the middle letter tells us exactly where that angle is. The next three, we're going to classify the angles. So in number 2, we have an obtuse angle. In 3, we have a right angle. And in 4, we have an acute angle. So here we're talking about the angles here, here, and here. We have some other types of angles. Complementary angles are a pair of angles with measures that add up to 90 degrees. And there are two examples of that below. So on the left, angle 1 and angle 2 are complementary. Their sums would add up to 90 degrees. And on the right, the two angles are also complementary. Supplementary angles are a pair of angles with measures that add up to 180 degrees. So their measures will add up to make a straight line. We see that in the example on the left with angles 3 and angle 4. And then vertical angles are congruent opposite angles formed by the intersection of two lines. So in that example, we can say that Angle 6 and angle 8 are vertical, so that means that angle 6 is congruent to angle 8. And I can also say that angle 5 and angle 7 are vertical, so that means angle 5 is congruent to angle 7. Okay, we're going to use the diagram on the right to answer a few questions. So in 5, we want to name a pair of complementary angles. And there are a few examples here. I'm going to go with the most obvious, though, angle 7 and angle 6. So remember, complementary angles are angles whose measures add up to 90 degrees. Number 6, we want to name a pair of vertical angles. So I could say angle 2 and angle 5. Notice how I'm using the angle symbol when I name each of these angles. 7, a pair of supplementary angles. So here, you um, might need to combine more than one uh, pair of angles. So I said that if I take angle 4 plus angle 5 and angle 3, I'll get 180 degrees. So we can say that they are supplementary. Uh, number 8, an angle congruent to angle 4. That would be angle 1. It's vertical angle. 9, an acute angle. Um, bunch of choices here. You can say angle 7, um, angle 6 is acute, angle 1, 2, 4, 5, and 10, an obtuse angle. So we want to go greater than 90 degrees but less than 180. So again, we're going to need to add some angles together. So I said if I had angle 1 plus angle 7 and plus angle 6, I would get an angle greater than 90 but less than 180. Okay, here's our last postulate for this lesson. The angle addition postulate, which is similar to our line segment addition postulate. Um, first one says if B is a point in the interior of angle AOC, then the measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC will equal the measure of angle AOC. So in other words, if I take angle AOB, so this angle here, plus angle BOC, I will get the entire angle AOC. 
And then the second one says, if angle AOC is a straight angle, so 180 degrees, then the measure of angle AOB plus the measure of angle BOC equals 180. All right, let's do some examples using that angle addition postulate. So in our first figure on the right, we know that angle 1 is 42 degrees, so I'm going to mark that. And the measure of angle ABC, so the entire angle here, is 88 degrees. Now, you can't assume that angle ABC is 90 because it looks like 90. Very important thing in math not to assume. It's actually only 88 degrees. All right, so we want to find the measure of angle 2. Well, going by the angle addition postulate, I know that the measure of angle 1 plus the measure of angle 2 will equal the measure of angle ABC. So, angle 1 is 42 degrees. I don't know the measure of angle 2, but I know the measure of angle ABC is 88. So if I take 88 minus 42, I get that the measure of angle 2 is 46 degrees. Okay, number 12. We know that the measure of angle 3 is 3x plus 9, so that's right here. And we know that the measure of angle 4 is 10x minus 11. And we want to find x. Well, again, by our angle addition postulate, we can tell that angle x, y, z is a straight angle, so it's 180 degrees. So my equation would be 3x plus 9 plus 10x minus 11 equals 180. And then we can combine like terms. Solving for x, oops, I added 2, but not really. Okay, that should be 182. Here we go. Um, then divide by 13, and we get that x equals 14. And that's all we had to do in that problem. We didn't have to find any of the measures of the angles. Okay, and lastly, number 13. See, the measure of angle 5 is 5x plus 7. Measure of angle 6 is 2x minus 3. And our whole angle, QRS, is 8x minus 12. So similar to our first one, we can add up our two smaller angles and set equal to our entire angle. And the final question here is we need to find the measure of angle QRS. All right, so our equation can say 5x plus 7 plus 2x minus 3 equals 8x minus 12. All right, so let's combine some like terms. And because I'm running out of room, I'll do the next two steps just in one step. So I'm going to add 12 and get 16 and I'm going to subtract 7x and get x. So x is 16. Now if I want to find the measure of angle QRS, I'm going to take 8 times 16 and then minus 12. There we go. And I get 116 degrees. Okay, and that's it for this lesson. Um, go ahead and work on your practice 1-6.